Welcome back to the Binance Minipod series, where we summarize some of the latest pieces prepared by Binance Research. Binance Research is the market analysis and research arm of Binance. Find the latest reports and insights at research.binance.com. Hey guys, this is Brian from Binance Trading, and today we're going to be taking a look at our latest research report on staking. And the report is titled, the rise of staking from theory to building large infrastructure. And because it is a report on staking, uh, before I begin, I want to say that Binance does offer staking services, which you can check out at binance.com slash en slash staking. In the first section of the report, we're going to take a look at some of the definitions and history behind staking. And staking is defined on Binance Academy as the process of holding funds in a cryptocurrency wallet to support operations of a blockchain network. Essentially, it consists of locking cryptocurrencies to receive rewards. For the most part, the process of staking relies on users participating in blockchain activities through a personal crypto wallet such as Trust Wallet. Um, and so projects generally use staking rewards as an, as an incentive mechanism to encourage users to participate. But because rewards are usually denominated in a non-fiat picked cryptocurrency, it does carry some potential risks. A simple example of this risk would be if you are holding and staking a particular coin, um, but if the coin drops in price, then it could actually offset the, the staking rewards that you receive. There are a few different implementations for proof of stake algorithms. And these algorithms use a pseudo random election process to select a node to be the validator of the next block based on a combination of factors that in could include the staking age, randomization, and the node's wealth. One variant of proof of stake is the delegated proof of stake or DPOS, which was first used by BitShares and then eventually other projects, including Steam, Lisk, and Arc. And a DPoS-based blockchain counts with a voting system where stakeholders outsource their work to a third party. In other words, they are able to vote for a few delegates that will secure the network on their behalf, as defined by Binance Academy. Stakeable coins can be generally segmented into five different families. Uh, one would be the pure proof of stake, like Algorand, the delegated proof of stake, like Icon and EOS, the distributed model, such as Stellar, the dual coin system, such as NEO and GAS, and the master node with uh, Dash, Tomo Chain, and Zcoin. To give a brief overview of the largest assets supporting staking, uh, you can look in table one, and we have a list of the top 10 crypto assets supporting or planning to support staking, and these include Ethereum, EOS, Stellar, Tron, Cardano, Dash, Cosmos, Tezos, Neo, and Ontology, and they have a combined market capitalization of $25.8 billion. In chart one, we take a look at some of the staking yields of various different cryptocurrencies, and the highest yields were projects uh, Synthetics with a 61.9% yield rate, and LivePeer with a 102.7% yield rate. In chart two, we compare the volumes locked in decentralized finance versus staked amount. And you can see that decentralized finance has close to a billion dollars locked, whereas there are currently about $6.4 billion uh, in staked amount. In charts three and four, we take a look at some staking ratios. And we can see that Synthetics Network had the highest staking ratio across uh, the largest 15 blockchains by market capitalization. Algorand, Tezos, and Cosmos also displayed high staking ratios uh, with over a 70% staking ratio. Conversely, coins like Tron and Qtum exhibited a low staking ratio of under 25%. Next, in part two of this report, we're going to be looking at staking dynamics, where we look at the rewards and also the risks, restrictions, and obligations that come with staking. And so we want to tell you this so that 
Um, you know the different factors that you should consider before deciding to partake in staking. So first looking at rewards, uh, this is qu pretty simple in proof of work blockchains with rewards uh, being awarded to miners proportional to their hash power. It's quite a bit different for proof of stake though with uh, rewards distributed to users who stake on the network. And so these rewards, they can come in all shapes and sizes. Some systems will have uh, maximum reward caps. Some will require periodic claiming. Some will have lockup periods um, and some will have compounding rewards. Participants in staking may also receive uh, different rights and, or access depending on the structure and governance of a given cryptocurrency. And so these are some of the things that you have to consider before deciding whether participating in staking for a particular project is, is worth it or not. Along with these rewards, though, do come some obligations and requirements in, in most cases. And one of these obligations is governance. And so participants in staking may be required to vote for decisions regarding the chain and its ecosystem. And sometimes this can kind of be seen as a, as a burden because, for example, they may need to attend weekly governance calls, as is in the case with MakerDAO or participate in online discussions and forums. And so this may require uh, participants to spend their time doing this. Other potential downsides include the uh, potential fees for a node application. So for example, if you want to become a, a node runner for a project, then generally you have to buy a certain amount of that project's coins. And there are also operational costs, um, which can vary quite a bit in terms of price. And so it can actually be, be fairly expensive to, to keep a, a master node running. As a staking participant, you may also need some technical expertise, especially if you are a node runner. And so, for example, you need to know how to operate nodes, uptime requirements, additional security measures, user interfaces, and staking support in wallets. There may also be some restrictions and risks that come with staking, such as a locking period and liquidity risks. And so specifically, you would sort of need to ask yourself questions such as, can I move my funds while they are being staked? And how easily can I stop staking at any given time? So with this, you would need to consider unbonding restrictions, the frequency of reward payouts, and custodianship risk. One other fairly obvious risk is opportunity cost. And so you would have to determine whether a chain staking reward rate and how it compares to rewards for other coins, as well as simply just trading the coins yourself. Since staking is a passive investment strategy, some people obviously prefer active investment strategies. And so, for example, they may prefer to day trade a coin that offers staking instead of participating in staking, and they make better returns by using a different strategy than staking. To conclude, we want to say that although staking does come with risks, it certainly is an interesting way for users to generate passive income. And as the staking ecosystem continues to grow, we think that we'll see more and more users participate in staking. Also, with Ethereum slated to switch to a proof of stake in the near future, we're definitely interested in seeing how the blockchain space will react to this. For the sake of time, some parts of the report were skimmed or skipped over. So if you have some time, please read the full report at research.binance.com. Again, if you're interested in staking services, please go to binance.com slash en slash staking. So that's it for now, and uh, we hope to see you again next time.